Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome on the first workshop, uh, Learn Grasshopper Live in 2023. Uh, just let me know, as always, if you can hear me and see me well. I see already 55 people uh, live. Uh, just drop the comment if you can see and hear me well. If you can just maybe say uh, audio and video quality, 10 is the perfect video and audio, and one is the bad one that you cannot hear me. So we will start uh, soon. I'm just preparing. I'm just going to take some coffee, water. I'm going to recommend to do uh, for you as well. Uh, and I hope you can hear me. Let me see. We have Alejandro. It works well, audio and video. Good to, good to hear that. Uh, if something will be wrong, Alejandro, just let me just let me know. And thanks, thanks for this, uh, thanks for this comment. Uh, we will start in uh, about six minutes, so still a little bit time. Uh, just prepare some water, maybe some pencil and some piece of paper. Maybe you are going to uh, write something uh, down. So soon we will start. So Alejandro, uh, nice to see you here. Tobias, Białystok, I can hear you and see you too. Good to see you again on the next workshop. I I think you are going to enjoy it since you are advanced Tecla, Tecla users. So now you can enter the parametric world. So welcome, welcome to welcome to my channel, Tobias. Okay, I have my coffee here. Let me see. We have some. We have Omar from LinkedIn, uh, from Brazil. Uh, good morning, uh, Omar. Uh, I think it's really um, early uh, at your at your time. Just let me know, Omar, if this time for workshop is okay for you. Uh, I'm going to. I'm planning have a bunch of series of Tecla workshops. So just let me know if this time suits you well for the for the Brazil or all the South uh, America. Uh, we will start, let me see, I will prepare presentation. So just four minutes, more people are coming. Uh, that's nice. Uh, just let us know. Um, what do you use Tecla for? If you can just write on the on the chat, uh, I will be really appreciate. Let's get to know each other. Uh, good. What you are working? I'm, I'm I'm assuming that you are a Tecla user. So just give a comment. What company you are working for, and what uh, what do you use Tecla for? Maybe it's bridges, as me. I'm a bridge designer, uh, or maybe you work with the steel detailing. Maybe you make some drawings technical drawings in Tecla, uh, maybe precast. Uh, I've been working two years in Consolis, so I know that there's many Consolis uh, precast companies in the world that are using Tecla, the same as a steel detailing that Tecla is really, really great tool for that. So just drop a comment. Let me see. We have Ameya. Hello from India. Hello, good evening to you. Welcome. We will soon start our workshop exactly at 2 p.m. Just before we will start, if you can just leave the comments, Amea, and the same Omar, Tobias, Alejandro, you are with us. Just drop the comment what actually you are working with Tecla, what you are doing, for what company you are working. So also we know each other a little bit better. Okay, we have Amea, Steel, and Rebar for FAB, Grasshopper Tecla for every parametric stuff. Great, uh, great to see you. So I, I, I can see that you have already, uh, already some experience in using Grasshopper and Tecla. That's good. This workshop it will be pretty easy for you because it will be really basic stuff. But even if you are experienced use experienced user, for sure. You will you will enjoy it. 
Uh, hello, uh, Hosan. Hi, can you read my comment? Yes, I can see your comment. So just drop it and just write. What do you use Tecla for? Uh, so yeah, I will see your comments. Uh, Amayan working with uh, Walter P. Moore Associates. Hello from Germany, still detailer and watching from Germany. That's great. You have Jonathan, uh, substation design. Greetings from Ireland. We have Darius Maxim. Uh, Darius, you can drop the comments that you are working with the prefab and you would like to start with Grasshopper. Don't be shy. Uh, Andrea, um, progress engineering. I'm using Tecla mainly for steel, but starting uh, to Nice, uh, it's also for rebar placing. Edson, we can hear you. That's great. Hi, Edson from Brazil. Philip, hi, we use it for tunnels. That's great. I've been using Tecla also for tunnels and, and bridges, and it's pretty well, especially for the all the shapes, trumpets, when you need to change the profile of your tunnel. So everything works fine. OK, we have some people from Emmanuel from uh, Norway, uh, experienced Tecla user using it for light steel frame model and drawing. So today we are I'm going to give you feedback how actually to start using Grasshopper inside Tecla. Uh, hello, Ergin from uh, Turkey, steel structure detailing only. So I assume that everyone who joined here uh, this uh, workshop is a Tecla user, maybe beginner, maybe advanced, but maybe some knowledge of, that's good. That's a good start point to use Grasshopper Tecla Live Link. Darius from Spencon Prefab Industry. I think it's a uh, lots of people from the Prefab Industry. Uh, their Tecla is really popular there, and hope it will be also more popular of using Grasshopper Tecla Live Link. And as always, uh, we are live on the Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. And please, if you can leave a thumb uh, up on the YouTube or thumb up on the LinkedIn or Facebook, it will really help me to reach more people, to make this workshop more popular, for to reach more Tecla users and spread the knowledge about using Grasshopper, because I really believe that uh, Grasshopper has a huge impact into all the uh, Tecla users. So. You, it's coming 2 p.m. Central European time. So soon we are starting. Let me see. We have Gwitter, Simon from Poland here. Nice to nice to see you here. Uh, Hassan, that I need to know how parametric design can help me and increase my speed, efficiency, productivity in design of reinforcement concrete structure. Yeah, reinforcement is a great topic. We are going for sure discuss it. Uh, in uh, our workshop series. OK, so let's uh, put this bar down. Let's some um, com comments. Thanks for all the, if you still haven't, leave the thumbs up. So please do that. OK, so let's uh, start it. We have already 2 PM. So let's start it without further ado. Uh, session time, it will be about 90 minutes. Uh, we'll see how many questions it will be. Uh, we have uh, tons of materials today to present. But I, I don't want to extend that. Of course, it depends. I will stay here until I will answer all of your questions. Uh, recording, I saw already some question if it will be available. Yes, it will be available to watch later, but you have to register. If you haven't got any email notification from me, from chrislearngrasshopper.com, uh, or and you are watching that or Facebook on LinkedIn. So please scan this QR code or go to learngrasshopper.com slash workshop Tecla link and you will register your email and you will get all the materials. Uh, you, uh, in, after this workshop, you will also get some homeworks to do uh, with the grasshopper, grasshopper files and PDF presentation with the, all the process of the five steps how to start with Grasshopper Tecla live link. And of course, uh, we have already tested. We can see all of your questions. So please just uh, write your question on LinkedIn or on YouTube, Facebook. So for sure, I'm going to answer all of them. 
So benefits of joining this workshop, first of all, learn how to download, install, and set up all the software, including how to connect and import reference files. So we are, I'm going to show also how to, in the most efficient way, work with the DVG import and including base point in Tecla. Uh, you are going to get also some uh, hands-on assignments and examples uh, about setting units, about importing DVG files. So I hope you will also enjoy. It will be not just theoretical, but also practical. And lastly, I hope that after this workshop, you will see how quickly and easy you can start with Grasshopper in Tecla. And it's not just a, a black magic. So you can improve your engineering skills because Grasshopper in Tecla is really, really awesome. OK, so let's start with this first workshop, as I said, in 2024. And I would like to announce that it will be the series of the workshop. So today is the 17th of January. So we are starting with five easy steps to start with Grasshopper Tecla Live Link. But actually, every single month, I already booked that in my calendar, some topics that we are going to discuss. The next one will be in the February, March, April, and May. These dates are set up already. If you have registered for this one, I'm going to remind you for the next one. But what I'm going to talk about, it depends on you. So maybe you can just write down right now uh, any suggestions for the next one. I know that we are going to start with the five steps because not everyone is Grasshopper uh, user. Uh, so we are going to really bit slowly introduce first, but next one, maybe you have some topics, maybe bridges, maybe steel detailings, maybe tunnels. Uh, maybe precast. There are a lot of precasts, so maybe we can take this separate topic, or maybe let's say user-defined attributes. I'm using a lot uh, Grasshopper uh, for that, for setting user-defined attributes, or maybe rebar modeling. It's really powerful that you can create your own shapes or automate all the reinforcement. So you can just write down your ideas. So we will go. We are going to go through. Uh, all of them, and for sure, uh, those who will have the most votes, of course, we are going to put as a first. So we'll see also what is the level of the group. Uh, if you are the beginner, no worry, you can just write the comment that you are you are beginner, so you would like to start from scratch. So this workshop series is for free uh, every single month. And the same if you, I am going to also ask you about the timing. Uh, today, it's, uh, we have at the 2 p.m. Central European time, but maybe the next one maybe can be in the evening in the Europe or in the morning in the Europe. So just maybe it will be better for you. So just write also the comment if it's the timing is better now at this time or maybe a little bit later or sooner. So maybe we can a little bit rotate a little bit that it will be not the same time. Okay, we have some first comments. So Philip. Could there be a workshop about Rhino inside Revit? Uh, yeah, uh, why not? Uh, we can also do that. In this, this is this workshop series is about uh, Tecla. So I will also do about Rhino inside Revit, but out of this series. So I'm going to have work webinars also every second week. So once it will be Tecla workshop, and another it will be about different software. So for sure. Revit is on the on the list. Uh, Gabor bridge design, okay. My, mainly steel, okay. Thank you. Uh, how can I have the Grasshopper license if I want to buy the Learn Grasshopper course? I'm going to answer this question afterwards when I'm going to discuss about the Grasshopper licensing. If it's possible to show something uh, concerning steel detailing and automatic dimension at drawings, yeah. Uh, guitar, uh, SL. Uh, yes, of course, uh, the drawings is a big topics right now because they're thanks to Grzegorz, Greg, uh, you can now automate the drawing through uh, Grasshopper. So definitely one of the workshop will be about creating drawings. So thanks for, thanks for this uh, comment. Uh, John, I have just started using Krynan Grasshopper. I'm currently designing a bridge. So this should be really helpful. 
Sure. So we have already three bridge designers here. So we have something to, uh, we have new analyze, uh, analyze the Ranselva bridge. That's a good idea. I have some ideas already to include that. So for sure, uh, AI documentary, we are going to include that. Okay, so let's start it. Thanks for your, uh, thanks for your comments. For, for those who don't know me, I'm going to introduce, my name is Krzysztof Wojsław. You can call me Chris. Originally, I'm coming from Poland. 10 years, I've been working as a bridge consultant. Uh, and now I have started my own company and 100% of time now I'm dedicating to spread the knowledge and teach parametric design. So I have my YouTube channel, I have my mailing list with more than 10,000 uh, engineers uh, on it, where every week I'm trying to share the knowledge uh, about using how to use Grasshopper and how to practi practically, in practice, apply it at work. Uh, I'm also a guest lecturer, academic lecturer at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology and at the Global Master's Program at Ziggurat. So as you can see, I'm really into, into sharing the knowledge. Okay, so let's start. What are Rhino and Grasshopper? Just one, two minutes about that. So all of us are in this, on the same page. Like not, not everyone knows what are these two softwares. So first, Rhinosaurus is a commercial 3D computer graphic and CAD application. So the software was developed by Robert and McNeil and Associate uh, is an American and privately held, it's really important, and um, employee-owned company. This is a really difference, this is a huge difference between Trimble and Autodesk and McNeil. McNeil is, as I said, privately company and all the uh, company is owned by all the employees. It was found in 1980, so it's already 30, let's say five years, I think, 20, 35 years. So it's already uh, on the market. And as you can see on the picture, in the picture right now, it was mainly designed for uh, boats. Uh, actually in 80s, mainly because rhinosaurs geometry based on NURBS. NURBS are mathematical representation of 3D geometry that can represent any type of shape. It's really great for double curve uh, surfaces. That's why jewelry uh, industry is using, automotive industry are, are, are designed for aeroplanes are using that as well. Uh, so it's really widely used. So generally speaking, if you think about Rhinosaur, you can think about the CAD tool, really similar to the SolidWorks or, or AutoCAD. So maybe this will be something similar. Uh, if we look on the Rhino file, this format is called 3DM. It's a native file of Rhino. Uh, it's open. So it's really important that you can also open it in different softwares and used to store 3D model and not just only 3D geometry, but in the 3DM file, you can also store materials, lights, and annotation, okay? So this is right about Rhino. And next uh, is, of course, Grasshopper. So Grasshopper is a visual programming language, the environment that runs within Rhino 3D. So you don't have to, from Rhino 6, you don't have to install any plugins. When you have, if you download the newest version seven or eight, you will have Grasshopper installed already in the in six version as well. So this is a visual programming language. And for those who never seen Grasshopper uh, before, so you will see that is a kind of components that are connected with wires. So basically speaking, it's a relationship between objects. You can see that we are moving some object, we are ro rotating, and all of them are connected into each other. So for engineers and architects, uh, it's easier to learn because we are mostly used to visual language, like visual concept. Uh, for me, it was easier to just start with programming because of this visual concept, not just a wall with the text like Python on C-sharp. It's more hard code uh, programming, but 
when you would like to start, it's really visual programming is the way to go. And we, uh, I would like to introduce two files of Grasshopper, one blue and uh, one green. This is icons for the Grasshopper files. The first one is a Grasshopper definition. Okay, so in this definition, we create all these wires, all these components, so we save this as a file, the blue one. The green one uh, is a assemb grasshopper assembly. We are using that when we would like to extend capabilities of grasshopper. For example, if you would like to extend functionalities uh, of the extra components, we need to install and put it in our grasshopper library, this assembly. And for example, Grasshopper Live Link is one of the Grasshopper assembly. OK, so just sum up. Rhino, you can think about as a CAD, uh, AutoCAD, CAD application. Grasshopper about visual programming language. And that were represented by two files. OK, so now if we would like to connect a Grasshopper and Rhino together with Tecla, we need to install the Tecla Live Link, Grasshopper Tecla Live Link. And if you go to Tecla Warehouse, actually, when you write Grasshopper, you will find there actually three or four options to choose. Let's start with the number, the last one, number third one. It's called Grasshopper Tecla Structure Designer. This connection is not for Tecla structures, it's for Tecla Structure Design. It's for a software. Uh, that is we are using for calculating. So this is a different thing, different connection. Of course, this Tecla Structure Designer can be also connected with Grasshopper. But this is not what we are going to talk about. Number two is Grasshopper Component. This is also not the live link. And number one is Grasshopper Tecla Live Link. I will show you the difference right now between number one and two, because it's really important to not mess up and download the, the wrong file. So the Tecla Live Link, uh, when I, I said about Rhino and Grasshopper, that are two softwares installed together, and they are talking into each other. But unfortunately, they cannot talk to Tecla without the link. So that's why from the warehouse, the first thing here, Grasshopper Tecla Live Link, we have to install this link that, so the Rhino and Grasshopper can speak, can talk to Tecla. When you will see the Grasshopper component, actually, it's the option that uses a Rhino Insight technology. Uh, when you, will, you can see at the screen right now uh, on, the, on the site, is the application and components. Here you, have, you can choose Grasshopper component. So actually, instead of writing your own applications and components with Tecla Open API with C Sharp, which is as I said, really advanced uh, programming language. Actually, you can write your application and use it by users that don't know Grasshopper as the application standard application and components. So, for for example, here uh, in the uh, uh, what is behind this application, which creating this uh, spiral staircase, is a Grasshopper file. So everything is written in Grasshopper instead of uh, C-Sharp. So this is the main difference, OK? So this is a really short introduction about what is Rhino, what is Graph Grasshopper, and what is Grasshopper Tecla Live Link. Just write a comment if everything is clear. So now uh, in front of you, it's a presentation with the five steps to start with Grasshopper uh, Tecla Live Link. So we will go through all these five points. If you have, if something is not unclear, uh, what is Rhino, what is Grasshopper? So just just put it on the comment. Uh, so comments: How to read XML in Tecla? I think we're going to talk about that. Uh, just if you can just write a comment, what kind of XML file? Do you think about land XML file in Tecla? You need to be more Spotify. Uh, we have already some question, uh, follow-up question. 
I look for that Blender open source program to convert XML file to more convenient format to import in Tecla. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, this is the one option. Second option is there's already Grasshopper components for that. So we all can also maybe in the future uh, talk about that. Okay, how to create Grasshopper DLL? Uh, yeah, so Grasshopper assembly files uh, can be created by uh, C Sharp. If you know programming language as uh, C Sharp, I think you can also create by Python, but C Sharp is maybe in the 95%. Uh, so you need to, to create your own plugins, your own connections. So you have to know uh, C Sharp and you can create that in Visual uh, Studio, Code Studio. Can this be used to creating uh, grating? Uh, I'm not sure uh, grating is it about, can you be more specified? What does you mean about grating? Uh, how to automatically assign joint components in Grasshopper by specific point list? Uh, I'm, we are going to, I think this question is more technical. I will open the Grasshopper and Tecla at the end and for sure I'm going to answer that. Okay, thanks for that question. So let's start and let's go to jump to the first one. Like we have to download, of course, the right software. So to work with Grasshopper Tecla Live Link, we have to download, of course, Tecla. We have to start with Tecla. For sure, many of you are already having Tecla on your computer with the license. I will also show you that if you are using the old version of Tecla, or if you are a student, so actually it's an educational license when and that you can use for educational purposes. This is a limited version, so you cannot, I think, make any exports, uh, any reports, reports. Uh, you cannot make IFC, uh, and of course you cannot save this and open in another version of Tecla. So to get the educational license, in order, for example, if you would like to try version 2023, so actually you can register uh, if you have Trimble identity. Trimble identity you can create uh, for free uh, in, uh, in order to download this version. So if you create, it's really easy process to create your uh, Trimble uh, uh, login. Afterwards, you can get the Tecla student subscription. So after just activating, so you will get for 365 days student uh, 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 license. And then you, in this link, uh, of course, I will also forward to you this presentation with the old link so you can download uh, the, the version uh, of Tecla. And I really recommend to download the latest uh, today and in the next workshop I'm going to show in the and show you the version 2023. So this is the last one you can download from Tecla website. And next you can go through the process. Just go to next, next, and here we know one comment. I really recommend to use the default. Uh, play uh, installation folder for Tecla because when we are going to uh, in the uh, in the later phase going into advanced topics like using C sharp components and accessing Tecla API, so it's really recommended to use this default. It can be in the C Tecla structure or T C program files slash Tecla structures because it will be easier to reference to some files and have all the Tecla uh, versions in the one folder. It will be much, much easier. So after the installation, you are ready to go, but I assume that most of you uh, ha have already license and Tecla installed. So we are good here. Next step, next step is to install Rhinosaur. So Rhinosaur uh, can be downloaded from rhinosaurs.rhino3d.com. Uh, there is a 90 days evaluation version. So if you will register your email, you will get one time uh, license for 90 days. It's a full license. You can use everything, for, use, it, use it for everything. Uh, the thing is that it can be installed only once on your computer. 
it's not based on your email, it's based on your computer. So if you install one, so you have 90 days to use it. If you go to the uh, rhino3d.com uh, download, so you will see that there is the uh, version eight available right now. This is the newest version. Uh, it was released in November uh, 2023. And this is this version we can use, but if you have seven or six, that's not worry, uh, not problem at all. Uh, Tecla Live Link supposed to work on every single version. The eight one is the newest, so I haven't still tested it. If you, if some of you have already tested, just drop a comment if everything is working. Uh, I work with the Rhino six and seven; everything was okay. If you have tested already in Rhino eight, just let me know. Okay. So I will not show the process of installation because it's super easy, super smooth. Uh, so you will have no problem. The first thing after installation, you will start the Rhino. And Rhino, it will be splash screen, screen and ask about templates. So here, I really always recommend to work in this. Actually, it's not a recommendation. It must have in order to work in the uh, good manner with Grasshopper and Tecla to set up the same units. So I, for example, work with millimeters in Tecla. So I choose the same for Rhino. If you work, if you work with inches, the same it will be with inches. Okay, so now we have Rhino. So when we open, you will see the four screens, four windows. And the next step is to open Grasshopper. Grasshopper can be open on the three different uh, manners. First is if you just write in the comment box uh, at the top, just Grasshopper, double S and double P. So click the enter. So with Grasshopper will appear. The next one option is to go to tools. There will be a drop down menu. And uh, so we will see that there is a Grasshopper to choose or the third option here uh, we have. So we can select from the standard tab is the icon, green icon. Okay. So now is a live link. To download the live link, actually you need to have Trimble account and the Tecla maintenance, okay? Because this is, this is the way how you get access to the Tecla warehouse. What's important here? To download. You have to download. To install, you don't have to, you have to have like Trimble account is for free. I know that the Tecla maintenance costs uh, some, they change some politics right now, but here is a uh, asterisk here that you need to, to have to download. To install, you don't have to. If you're using education Tecla license, you have to download educational version of plugin, and I will show you uh, where to download it. And one important thing, if you are going to download the version from the Tecla warehouse, you have to download the proper version of Tecla Live Link, the same version that you are using Tecla for. It's really important because it's a, one of the main cases where the link is not working. Um, it's really like, it's not the best process, I mean, you can say, because if you have several license uh, Tecla versions, so actually you have to switch Live Link every time. I will show you briefly. Okay, so from the a warehouse. If you have access, you will see Grasshopper Tecla Live Link, and you have also Grasshopper Tecla Live Link Campus Edition. Campus Edition is for those version if you are using educational version. Okay, so this is the different thing. You have to install that. If you are going to change, or let's say you have the Tecla 2020, the normal license, so you have to download and install Grasshopper Tecla Live Link as a standard one for the 2020 version. But if you have 2023 and you are using campus uh, edition, uh, campus uh, edition and with educational, so you have to switch it. I will show you. Okay, so when you will download, you will download the um, zip file. And the zip file needs to be unpacked in your folder. And afterwards, you will see the green file, the grasshopper assembly file that uh, this one I already showed you, the green ones. 
if you double click they will not install it's not that it's not that uh, easy as double click but i will show you that it's also easy the process is easy to install okay so again if you are using educational version so it needs to be different files and also different files for different tecla versions so make sure you download the correct tecla structure version okay so we have to this download uh, topic. If you have comments to that, I'm, I will answer them right now. And soon, uh, the next one uh, topic, uh, the second step, it will be how to set up, okay? So we have, uh, let's say, come back. We have Tecla, we have Rhino, we have LiveLink on our computer. So everything is okay. So the next topic, it will be how to set up everything. Uh, can you increase uh, video streaming into uh, HD? I think I cannot right now, but I will try to to put it uh, on uh, on YouTube with the HD version. Uh, how to read a land XML in Grasshopper? Which component we need to use? Uh, actually, it's a, just a new release. Actually, two two weeks ago, uh, the component uh, called and uh, endpoints. Uh, if you go to Food for Rhino, so actually you can uh, just download it for free, still one month to try it. Uh, Andre uh, have created that, so endpoints, you can find it. Uh, okay, I just joined to call. What's the link for downloading the Tecla? No worries. Remember that you can also rewatch uh, the webinar uh, from before to download uh, the Tecla. You, need, you have to create your Trimble uh, account for free, and then you can also apply for educational license. So you can download there for free. But first, you need to start with the Trimble uh, account. Uh, okay, how to manipulate components in Tecla? I will show that. Let me see. I will, this one we answered. This one, a bar grating full flooring. Yeah, so bar grating full flooring. Uh, yeah, you can use the components that actually, uh, I can uh, come back to this question when I will have Tecla, but actually you can use the components on the applications that you have and use it. So for example, floor layout. I'm not sure if you are referring to that one, I, but I think that, so you can also use uh, create through grasshopper that but yeah we'll come back to that okay if you have already trimble account so just go there and just type i will also share the presentation uh, if you write educational uh, version educational license tecla so for sure you will find it uh, could you please explain how well can generate drawing in tecla and get edited part with our requirement using Grasshopper. Uh, sure, uh, but not today, but in the workshop series, like every month, uh, and for sure one of them who will be, uh, one of them will be for sure uh, how to create drawing. Okay, let's uh, do not see more questions. So let's go. Let's go to the next one. Okay, so now we have everything set up. So let's go to how to install. And as, as I said, you cannot just double click uh, on the uh, green icon from the Grasshopper. You have to actually cop copy the green file into Grasshopper libraries. Okay, we'll come back. We'll come back to that. So first thing, before all the copying when we are going to unpack all the folder is to check if the file is blocked, okay? So when we click, if you download the proper version, if you have educational version, so it needs to proper, and it needs to be the same number of the Tecla that you are using. Let's say here we have some version. When we, we right click uh, on the this icon and go to properties in the windows, so you will see here it was security alert. And this is a really common thing for Grasshopper uh, assemblies, Grasshopper components. 
that we have to unblock it, okay? So we need to click unblock, apply, okay. So if you are don't see any unblock button, so you are ready to go. This is really important because if you will not do it, uh, Windows will automatically block. Don't worry, it's not the virus. Uh, it just, just the grasshopper component works and some of them you have to unblock it. All right. So to install uh, this component, actually you have to just copy that component into your, your libraries. So if you are in the Grasshopper already, I already showed you how to enter through Rhino and type Grasshopper, double S double P. We go to open a file and go to special folders and go to component folders. Okay, so here you will see that we are opening the files. You can see that there is many of the components that I'm using. For example, it's a Sophistic, Bifocal, Sunglasses. It's a different components, give different plugins. And here I'm just copy and paste Grasshopper Tecla Line link educational. The right one too is a 2023 version and educational because I'm showing that on the educational version. After that, you have to close uh, Rhino and the Grasshopper. It's also important because nothing will change. Okay, you just copy that, so everything will be copied. But you have, to, in order to get all the tabs, you need to restart your Rhino and Tecla. So just close it. You don't have to save nothing. No worries, and open it again. And here is a, one of the most important thing. You, we have to always launch the class structures first. So, for example, if we have 2023 version, if we if we do it opposite, Grasshopper, Rhino, and Grasshopper first, and then Tecla, so the link will be not established. Okay, so always Tecla structure first, and then Rhino and Grasshopper. If you did it correctly, and I hope you you will, uh, you will see. Uh, you can check if everything was uh, installed. Uh, on the top menu in the Grasshopper document, you will see that there is a Tecla. Uh, so it's a drop down menu. Uh, so you can have a mass of uh, options. But you have also Tecla 2000, in this case 22. So it's the version that we are going to use. Let me see. Maybe I will just show it uh, in the bigger scale. Yeah, so a little bit, so you can see a little bit more, maybe like this. So if you have this one, so everything is installed properly. So uh, again, if everything is established, so you are ready to go. But remember, always have to start Tecla Mother first and Rhinosaur and Grasshopper afterwards. Okay, this is really this is really important. Common mistakes. Let's go through some common mistakes. Why doesn't link create anything in the class structures? So first of all, make sure that you launch the class structures first. Okay, this is the first thing. I'm going to repeat that because my experience shows that this is the most common mistake. Second thing, the version of the cloud which you are having. If you are having a viewer or planner configuration of the class structure or the, for example, carbon license, so you can create any objects with this. So that's why it will be green, uh, red object, sorry. And the next point, uh, check if you have a correct service packs for Tecla installed. Maybe the not the latest one is installed. I have some issues with that uh, as well. So just remember uh, that uh, set work area to entire model. Sometimes you can create all the objects, but you cannot see it because they are out of this box. I will also show you in detail how to navigate in Tecla. The last one, check the profiles and grades are chosen. Sometimes maybe some profiles are not uh, creating because maybe it's missing some rebar grade or maybe material is missing. So that's why maybe the object will be not created. And I already seen the uh, question, how to update the link to another Tecla version. Okay, I already said that every time when you uh, would like to use Grasshopper for version 2000, let's say, 20 and 2023, and you are, if you are switching between project, so actually if you would like to use Grasshopper, so you have to manually uh, 
change the grasshopper assembly files. So for example, if you would like to change from educational version to uh, the version, the standard version. So you have to delete this one. You can just delete it or copy to your old folder and copy and paste the the next one, the, the, the version that you are going to use and restart Rhino and Grasshopper. There is uh, some companies have their work, some workarounds that, for example, if you are entering Grasshopper, so it will be a splash screen uh, and you can choose it, but you need to code it as well, maybe in the future, we can uh, make some solution for that. But for now, it's a manual process. Every time uh, you have to uh, copy and paste. Unfortunately, you cannot have several installed there. Maybe it will be changed and I will let you know if it will be changed. Okay, so we have download and set up everything. I will go check some question before we go to the next point which is navigating. Uh, let me see. Okay, do you have okay, do you have private lessons for specific uh, circumstances, uh, specific topics? No, actually, I'm trying to spread my knowledge for everyone. I'm, I do not have time for private license, uh, sorry, private private uh, lessons. Uh, but if you have specific topics, just Ashley, uh, just write down here. So maybe I will take this topic as the next one for the next workshop. Okay. So let's let's talk. Uh, let's share the knowledge with, knowledge with everyone. I, I I try to not hide anything and to spread the knowledge with everyone. Um... Uh, is the Tecla DVG component avail available in Grasshopper? Tecla DVG components. I'm not sure what you are referring to that. Um, you can import all the DVGs uh, into uh, into Rhino. I'm not sure is that Tecla DVG components. If you can be more specific here. Um, is it possible to have a lesson about creating longitudinal rebar on curve concrete bridge deck? Yeah, this is a topic that I think uh, we were going to take as a next workshop. Uh, so there are lots of ways of creating rebars, and for sure, it will longitudinal rebars. It will be one of the topics. So yeah. Uh, uh, okay, I have Tecla 2023 uh, service pack five. Uh, and download the Tecla Live Link 2023 115, but it seems doesn't work. Okay, we will come to the to this topic. The Grasshopper file is unblocked, and Rhino version is eight. Okay, uh, just uh, I ask question: Do you have maybe Rhino seven version? I know that already someone just wrote at the top uh, that um, this can be problem with uh, with eight version, but. Uh, we, we will come back to that. Uh, hi, Christoph. Do the Tecla Grasshopper Link 2017 work for Tecla 2023? No, actually no. Uh, but actually, but in from Tecla Warehouse, you can download up till Live Link up till uh, Grasshopper 2016. So if you have 16, if there's 2017, 2017 I, 2018, 2018 one. So actually, uh, Sebastian, who developed this link, actually updates also from version 2016. I think it was the first version. I think that 2016 was the first version I used uh, Grasshopper. So it's still updated with the new component. So you can use that one. Can I develop an intelligent custom components with Grasshopper and assign them in Tecla projects through the live link? Yeah, you can develop your custom components with the Grasshopper components for sure and assign them in Tecla projects. Uh, yeah, actually, I think they can be shared with your environment. It depends where you are going. It's the same as you creating your uh, components. So for example, if you create your component, so you can place it on your specific folder, for example, in your environment and share with the different users 
uh, inside the environment. So yeah, it's uh, for sure possible. Thanks for that question, by the way. All right, so let's uh, start with some first problem. So we have some navigation. So when we, you unpacked all the files, so you will see this green one that we have we installed already, but you will see that Sebastian from Trimble prepared also Grasshopper Tecla live link example. And this is a Grasshopper file which contains a Grasshopper definition that creates actually three objects. Yeah, three objects. You can see this roof, uh, this gray roof with the red uh, beams. We have also beam uh, building with the slabs and beam. And we have also a chimney structure, so I will show you. And uh, here we can, uh, just to check it, if everything works correctly. So guitar uh, SL, if you can also open this file uh, through the grasshopper. So if you please, before you check it, please restart both Tecla and uh, Grasshopper and open Tecla first and then Grasshopper and open this Grasshopper Tecla Live Link example with the same version again that you are using. And uh, maybe some objects will not show up uh, because probably you need to expand the work uh, area in the depth. If you are already familiar with uh, Rhino, uh, so, for example, you can zoom into objects into Rhino. So it's a zoom function. If you click on the objects in Grasshopper, so you can zoom it into Rhino. And actually, you can do the same for Tecla. So I will show you that on the next video. So let's say that we have really simple Grasshopper script that creates a column. So we have the column, which is in the zero, zero point uh, by uh, at now. We can have parameters for the length, for some attributes. We have some representation. So we under in the Rhino, as a, our CAD software, we can see this representation as a beam. Okay, so we have just one point at the bottom and one top at the end. The same as we, as we need them to specify in Tecla. Okay. So now you, you can see that we can change the parameters like position, the x, y, and z direction. But you will see that if we are going to move it outside the space, so in uh, Tecla, we can see that there is nothing visible because everything is outside the box. And this is a really common uh, problem, especially when you are working in the different coordinates. So sometimes this element can just jump out of the of the box. So there is the one function that, of course, the same in Rhino, you can just zoom it. So in Rhino, you will get this line, the representation of two points. But also, when you click on the column, on the column component uh, in uh, Tecla, let me see, I will see. So it's a green one. So actually, you will select this green one in Rhino, and also you will select that in Tecla, even if it's not visible. So afterwards, you can just create view, 3D, 3D view of part, and voila, you have a new view. So everything is clear. OK, so now I will open the, open the Rhino and Grasshopper. Just let me know if you can just see my screen. I will make it bigger so you can see everything. So if you have established everything correctly, I have version seven. So this one is for sure is working. And I have opened the Grasshopper Tecla Live Link example from 2023. It's also for the edu educational version. I have some errors, but I can see that the rest is working. So here uh, we have some components that actually all the components that are available. So you can see that there is lots of them. Uh, in this uh, workshop, we are not going to focus on, on that. Uh, we are just going to establish the, all the connection. OK, I can see that. Yes, you can see my screen with Tecla and Grasshopper. That's, that's great. OK, so I can see that something is creating here. Uh, there is some objects. There is not so much errors. Here is a one error we can see uh, just on the balloon. Uh, let me see what is uh, uh, Check, uh, it's not valid. Okay, it's missing the profile. 
so we can also afterwards change that. If we go to uh, the view in Tecla, so I have the new model open and I can see I can see the building. Maybe it's not the full one. Okay, it's cut it because you can see there is uh, some of the range and I cannot see the roof structure. So let's go and let's change it a little bit and space. we're using two points, uh, maybe a little bit bigger. So yes, we can see and let's change the height. Uh, so if you are a Tecla user, so for sure, you know what we are doing right now. So let's change the height, maybe even bigger. Okay, so now I have three structures. So let's start with the first one. So I have uh, I have the roof. I can see that there is uh, uh, there is no beams there because it was the wrong profile. Okay, so the best methodology to work with Grasshopper, Tecla, and uh, Rhino is to have three screens. Uh, I cannot share three screens uh, at the same time. Uh, not through the, the stream system that I have. So I will try to show all the free screens uh, on my uh, on my computer. I know it's not the best one, uh, especially in the small, but I hope you can you can see everything here. Uh, here maybe I will also show it like that. So you will see. Okay, so let's start with the first one. Uh, so here we can see double curved roof. So we can see that there is a grid of points creating. So when we click it, click on it, so we have clicking also on the grid. Yes, it's possible to create the grid uh, through Grasshopper. We have also some uh, boundaries, uh, some plates. Uh, so we can see this representation in uh, Rhino. So here, so we can play a little bit. We are not going to create any models like from scratch today. We are going to just check how this connection is established through the link. Okay, so we have some, some here. Okay, we have some missing some profiles. So we can also maybe some uh, profile catalog. So let's specify uh, some pick some catalog. I don't know what, what kind of catalog we have it. Uh, maybe some standard one. I don't know if it's missing profile. Okay, it's creating. Okay, so that was the error. It was missing, maybe uh, it was deep from different env environment, different profile. So here I set up some uh, standard one so we can see we have the roof structure. And of course, you can play with some parameters. Uh, maybe you can play the size of the uh, objects of the division. Let's maybe change the division of the object. So you can see in the Rhino is changing and as well in uh, Tecla as well. So you can play a little bit. Uh, this maybe it's not that real project, but let's let's just play with that. Uh, the same with the with the building. We can change some uh, profiles here. We have beam, columns, slabs, change the profile so you can play. This will be one uh, one first one of first of your homework. Just check if everything is working and play a little bit to just get now with uh, that one. Okay, so let's uh, go to the next topic. Let's say to the references, okay? So the we have already downloaded setup, we can navigate. So we, we already have this setup uh, uh, established. So now go to references, how to import all the DVG files, let's say, from the different projects, some roads alignment, maybe some terrain, and of course you can you can import all the DVG. You can import also Land XML uh, files to Rhino without any problems. When we start uh, with Rhino, we have to set up the same model units as we have with Tecla. So in this case, I'm I'm showing that we are from the template files. If you have one, uh, it's supposed to be. Uh, a large object millimeters. To change that, you can go to document properties. If you go to file option and document properties, you can set up model units on millimeters and try to also change the absolute tolerances uh, to one or zero one. 
that actually we are not really so strict like zero one of millimeter is good enough maybe one millimeter tolerances for tecla uh, users if you're working with construction it's like more than enough and of course project will work faster in rhino you can see what kind of uh, unit you have so for example if you go to millimeters so you can click uh, right click on this millimeters and go to unit settings and change them okay so we work in with millimeters when we are changing uh, the all the units we always need to restart to programs for example if you would like to if you have meters in tecla uh, so if you would like to change to millimeters you have to change it and restart the two programs and for example if we are going to change to millimeters in rhino so remember about the grid spacing for example if you will have another so you also need to uh, change that imperial units uh, Many of you maybe works with the imperial unit. So of course it's possible, but again, in Rhino, you have to set up, for example, you have to set up inches in that one, but make sure, but be aware that some of the parametric profile sections might need to be in millimeters anyways. This is how it's structured. Uh, so even if you're working with Rhino with inches, so it can, some of the profile be in millimeters. So be aware of that. Uh, and one thing, if you select points picked in uh, Tecla manually and afterwards you change the units, so it can be a really tricky. So also be aware of that. I, I have experienced that, that problem when I had meters and I picked some selected some points and I save it and afterwards I want to change all the units to millimeters. So everything crashed be be because like points were not transferred from meters to millimeters. So it's really important to set up uh, correct units at the start. DVG important. I will go through really quickly uh, what, what are the main rules when importing the DVG. So polyphase and 3D phase uh, are importing as a polygons and not as a NURBS. So yeah, of course, uh, Tecla is not working with the curve shape, it's working with the polygons. So that is why it's also importing polygons. White poly polylines are imported as surfaces. Aligned widths by layer and by object import as a print width. So it's really also important when you are importing something from AutoCAD to set up uh, the width of the uh, lines correctly. Block attributes imported as a text. Uh, attributes definition that are not included in block or will be skipped. So everything needs to be included in the attribute definition. Hatches uh, may not be important in the same position. So just a note, if you would like to have sometimes, you have to explode it. Uh, off and frozen layers uh, import uh, as off layers. So this is also really important that uh, in uh, AutoCAD, you have off and frozen, but in DVG, it will be imported as a off layer. Let me see, I will change a view a little bit to see the next point. And of course, XREF are, impor are imported as well. So when you are importing, so it will also be imported with the all uh, attached uh, files when you have it. All right. Uh, the next one about automating scaling here maybe it will be one of the biggest obstacles while when starting with uh, grasshopper and tecla uh, automatic scaling when you import for example a road line and for example they are in the road design they are working with meters so you need to scale it and you have two choices you can need to use automatic scaling or manual automating uh, you have to feel really comfortable with that uh, but you need to know what is the model unit. So for example, if you have model unit that set up are in millimeters and you are importing something from meters, so you have to scale it up because for example, if the road is five meters width, so if you are not scaling that, it will have five millimeters. So it's not that what we are, what they have. If you scale it up here, 
you will receive it correctly. You can also scale it, uh, scale the objects manually. Manually, the same as in AutoCAD, you can just select, let me see, I will just move my face, select the object and type base point scaling 0, 0 and type 1000 if you would like to from me, change from meters to millimeters or 0 0.001 if we are changing from meters to or millimeters to meters. So let me show you. I will import some uh, file. Uh, let me see. I will go to import. Uh, let me see. Maybe here I will be bigger. So let's import some logo here. Uh, DVG export. Let's maybe change some millimeters. Uh, oh, oh, maybe let's uh, let's let's keep it simple and small. Uh, DVG import. You can see that there is some object was imported and you will see that there is nothing and it's hard to see where is it. So basically when you write comment ZS, ZS, zoom selected and enter. So actually you will zoom to the, all the objects that you imported, okay? You can also find it as a new layer. So for example, if you cannot see this one, uh, so if you go to logo, this one was imported from the DVG, right click, and you go to select object, okay? So at the top, we have nine meshes added to the selection. And again, zoom selected, ZS, yeah. let's say ZS, and will be zoom. So this is the easiest way. Okay, so let's check the unit, uh, what we are having right now. The best way I'm always checking, first of all, are the coordinates. If I'm just hovering uh, the mouse over this object, so you can see we have X, Y uh, coordinate and Z. So you can see already that we are really near Origo. The next one is using polyline. I'm using polyline to check the width of the object. So for example, here I can check that this is at the, at the bottom. You can see that there is a 0 0.200, okay? So it's, I can see that this is a really, Small. The scale is millimeters. So let's select this uh, object and let just scale it manually. So let's write scale, enter, base point. So let's put 0 0.0.0. 0 .0. And now let's put it 1000 from meters to millimeters. And, and now again, zoom selected, ZS. So now I can see I'm really bit off from the coordinates. So you can see right now. And our width, it's already, okay, it's 194. You can also check by distance, I think. Distance, comment, so we can also pick one and second. So we have the distance 194 millimeters, okay? So this is how we can just scale our object. And this will be your first homework. So in the homework, uh, you, which you are going to get tomorrow morning, uh, you have to import uh, the, all the tech logo, Grasshopper, the Learn Grasshopper text in Tecla with Chris text and also logo of Tecla. There are in the four different DVG files. So your work, homework, it will be to import the DVG file. But the trick is here that every single part here is in a di this different scale. So we have microns, we have millimeters, we have centimeters, and we have meters. So first you can scale it automatically, as I showed you, or all manually, as I also showed you how you can scale, scale it. Is it understandable? Just let some comments if everything is understandable with the units. So now uh, we will jump into topic of how to move objects and how to work with the base point. Yes, everything is clear. That's good. We have some comments. I will answer all of them at the end of the Q&A session. All good. Thanks, John. Good to, good to see that. OK, so let's go to the base point. As you know, in uh, Tecla, uh, it's not uh, handling the 
global world coordinates. So always we have to move the structure from the global coordinates into local coordinates near Origo to do not have problems with geometry. In Rhino, we Rhino is actually quite good, quite good in the world coordinates, but actually I all, always moving uh, the geometry from the world co coordinate to the local coordinate in the same way I'm doing in Tecla. The thing is that the base point is not working in the same as Tecla. So there is a function model based. I'm not a fan of it. Of course, you can put the model base point and you can set up X, Y, and Z coordinate and export your uh, uh, your uh, geometry. But actually, I'm not the biggest fan. I will show you why. The thing is that I always wa I want to have like the field geometry and have uh, the full uh, power and to coordinate that, that I have moved it correctly, I have scaled it ma uh, manually. So I al always want to do it by myself. So if you take your base point in Tecla, so let's say you have a base point in Tecla, and let's say you have the east coordinate and the north coordinate. So here, again, you can need to change what is the unit. You have to have the same unit. You, you, we are going here working in milli meters. So remember that units in Tecla and Rhino should match each other. And here is the thing. If you have the east and north coordinates, so actually you have to move this, uh, our object uh, in Rhino my, by minus x component and minus y component. Okay, so it will be negative values of the vector. So if we are going to scale it, let's say that we have meters and we are going to scale millimeters. So first origin, we have to select all the uh, objects. We have to scale it from uh, of the origin 0, 0, 0 and factor 1000, or we can, and then we can also move it. So we have the move function origin uh, again, 0, 0, 0. So from which point we are going to move and then x and y vector. As you can see here, they I move by minus, uh, minus value here, OK? Of course, this is a manual uh, work that we are doing in uh, Rhino. But actually, you can also do it through Grasshopper. And this is maybe the better way to import that. So here in this example, you can see that we first moved uh, our geometry. Okay, so you can see that this is a meters. Okay, this is also possible, and that x and y coordinates are on the minus. So we can see that there is refer refer references on that, and then we can scale it through one thousand. It will also work. So this is a linear operation. So actually, you can switch them. You can first scale it and then move it, but afterwards move it by millimeters or first if you have in meters, so move by this coordinates. East coordinate and north coordinate, it will be minus negative values in uh, in Grasshopper. And again, it will be the second homework uh, for you to do with the base point in Tecla. Actually, your task is to create IFC file or 3D DVG model uh, to of the missing part of the steel structure. You can you will get the frame here. You will get the logo and you will get the steel structure. And you can see that there is some parts of the steel structure are missing. So that's why they are in the separate uh, DVG file. So you actually can create IFC file of the missing part and put it in the right. Coordinate. So at the end, you will get the IFC to IFC of the main part and the global coordinates and the second part of the global coordinate. So you will get this exercise tomorrow. OK, so we went through the four uh, points. I think it's everything is clear right now. We have still some time. Uh, I will soon go to the start simple. Uh, what, in my opinion, is the best way to start? Uh, and actually, when I started, I started with the modeling. 
And I'm not sure if the best way is to start actually with the modeling, uh, like the roof structure of the beams. I will give you some ideas how actually you can start using Grasshopper Tecla Live Link and actually use it at your work from the first day, not just creating like the crazy roof structure that you are not going to never design, but actually how to can use it at your work. Okay, let's go to some questions. Can connection between the members, beam to beam, beam to column and brace connections are possible to input using Grasshopper? Uh, yeah. Yeah, if we are using, for example, components, uh, let's say some welds or some bolts joints, uh, so you can establish inputs. Uh, actually, you can, the components that you have created, for example, if you have select five columns and some three beams, so it's also possible if you structure in the correct order. So yeah, it's possible. Uh, is it is it possible to use Tecla Live Link with Tecla Structure 2019 and Rhino 8? Uh, I think so. I think some of the things need to be changed in order in Rhino 8. But yeah, uh, it's definitely possible. You can find on the warehouse uh, version 2019 of the Live Link. Uh, how will an IFC file be helpful to me if I have a personalized template and work environment? Is it possible to map IFC to native Tecla elements? Uh, yeah, uh, actually, it's a good question. Um, I did once uh, that. Uh, actually, with extra plugin like Visual Arc or Geometry Gym, you can import IFC files into Rhino. And this will can be imported as a meshes. And actually in the your homework, actually you will get the script for changing meshes into Tecla items. Uh, here, it will be not possible to the change to the native Tecla elements. Unfortunately, not. Uh, you, can, uh, you can change them, for example, if you get the Beam uh, API profile. So actually you can change it into item course, but not, not into uh, native uh, Tecla objects. Unfortunately, it will be a magic if it will be maybe in the, in the future. Uh, but if you have IFC file and if you would like to have the separate objects as an item, of course, it's possible. And in this homework second, actually, you, you will get the whole script, which will help you to do that. Uh, let me see. Do you know which setting in Rhino 8 must be changed? Uh, I think I will contact. Um, I think it needs to be improved the uh, with the new release of the new version. I think it will be in 16. Uh, some of the components needs to be changed in order everything work. So I think you have to be wait a little bit for the latest revision if it's not working. But just give a try to Rhino 8. Okay, so let's go to start simple. I think this will be really interesting for every uh, Tecla and Grasshopper user who already use a Tecla and Grasshopper. So the component that I really love in Grasshopper Tecla Live Link is a object pipeline. Object pipeline is a component that actually automatically can grab all the items, native items, uh, from Tecla into Grasshopper. So you can use by the, you can sort it by the type or filter. I will show you shortly. So here we have a object uh, type. So we can see that there is a beam, poly beam, contour plate, fittings, all the stuff. So you can choose from the, from the list. Uh, Good tip is that you can use the auto value list. Uh, this is a new component uh, in Tecla Live Link in Grasshopper. So actually, if you connect it, so it will be drop down menu automatically will fill out with the all the uh, the options that you can select. The second thing is the filter. So you can see here at the top, uh, you can see that you have the filter and you have the type filter. This can be set, set up as a selection filter. So 
So for sure, you know, on the uh, lower uh, taskbar, you can see available selection filter and you can set up all the filters that you would like to use. For example, if you can set up for class name, uh, object, component names, and so on, some, let's say, profiles. So you can set up and save it as, for example, here in my profile. And if you save it, actually you can reuse it in Grasshopper, which is really, really convenient. So in this case, I have created my filter. It's called my filter. I have some parts, facades. I have some class equal to 30, 83. And we have object type. Maybe I can zoom it a little bit. Okay, so I can zoom it. If it's also object type equal to part. And you can see that I have selected all the walls in this project uh, of the beam, there are beams, and we can select all of them in Grasshopper. Just one, remember, one thing, uh, selection filter is not the same, which is view filter, okay? The view filter is the one you double click and you can select everything what you are viewing, but selection is what you will get this filter, what you are going to select. Okay, so here I'm going to share this uh, powerful uh, tip. Uh, okay, so let's uh, move it a little bit. So I have Rhino. Let's open Grasshopper. Uh, okay, and maybe I can delete that. So let's uh, let's create. Uh, okay, so let's have it like that. I will show you. So I have now some filters. Uh, some filters right now, it's selecting all the all the beams, okay? Uh, maybe I will use auto, uh, auto value list as I showed you. Maybe I will zoom it so you already seen that the resolution is not perfect. So let's connect me. So we can connect to the uh, type and we can select. So let's select beams, okay? So now you will see that we have selected all the beams in the project. That's really, that's really cool. The same, for example, we can, if we just copy uh, this component, we can use maybe for contour plates. Okay, so now we have some contour plates. That's, it's looking, it's looking good. Uh, we can maybe um, select just the columns. Okay, we have some beams. Okay, but let's select just the columns. So you will see that we have some, if we will see with panel, that we have some beams and we have also columns. At the end here with the columns. The best way to separate them is to use text match. Uh, let's use text match. So we are checking every text and it needs to be equal to column. Okay, so we are going to check this pattern and with the dispatch, don't worry if you don't know this, all the components, uh, I'm going to share all the scripts. Uh, we are going to select just the columns. So here we are going to model objects. We're going to select that. And let's, if we have already, so we can see we have 36 columns. I really like to, use the modify function and use the modify beam. If we go to Tecla, modify beam, okay? So if we're going to select this all beams, so you can see, oh, voila, we have all the columns. So now let's select, uh, let's change some attributes, okay? Uh, just be careful when you are using this function to your project that do not, uh, not destroy it, just use your maybe, a saved version on your local computer because you may destroy something. Uh, okay, so let's grab this Tecla model and change, let's say change the colors. So let's go to attributes, uh, part attributes and change the colors, okay? Change the profile attributes and change the color. It's a class in, uh, in Tecla. So here, voila, we can change the class. So actually we have 36 columns. So let's mm, create a series of the points, okay? So we will create a 36 different uh, numbers. So let's start with number uh, one and go with the step is one here. So we can create that to be specific and the count, it will be 36. So let's put it 36. 
I'm not sure if I'm going to create everything here is okay. So let's create that to task. Okay. And I have every column is different. Um, okay, looks good. But maybe we have more things to change and uh, maybe change the name. So let's create that. This every column will have different name. So let's think about that every column uh, will have concatenate. Oi, not this one. A column at the start. So it will called column. And afterwards, it will be a number. So let's say it will be number. So we have that. Maybe let's make some separator and just push, put it dash at the bottom. So now every single column will have the different name. Okay, so we have 36 different columns. So put it as a name. Okay, we can see just double click if everything was changed. So I can see column 26, column 30, and so on. We can also see that is a another another class. Is a 28, is a 28. Everything is clear. I really love this uh, pipeline, geometry pipeline, and this modify beam you, because you can play it uh, a little bit and actually you can apply it already at your work. And I think it's super, super useful. Uh, I use it a lot for UDAs. For example, I have already model and I have some uh, user defined attributes that are standard ones for some profiles. I can use some filters here. And actually, I can filter for, let's say, every slab for this uh, Z value. I can set up some uh, some of the user-defined attributes. And actually, it will work. The same script will work for every single project. So the same, but actually, you can open the same script and save it for your second project. Just write it if it's useful. And I think it will be like your also way of playing a little bit, not just not just changing the script of the like the whole structure, but also uh, for changing and adjusting attributes because this is the really strong side of using Grasshopper in Tecla that you can modify the object, and you can see that they can this object could be also created manually. You don't have to create all the like this building in Grasshopper. You can just refer this object. So you can take these objects and modify. So everything is clear here. So you are not creating new, new elements. Everything will be inside. All right. So that was uh, all that I have prepared it for you today. And. Uh, so the shortly, we'll go to answer all of your questions. So the next workshop, we already decided. Uh, I already got the email from you, and I saw your comments. The next one, uh, it will be about the reinforcement in grasshoppers. I think it will be really uh, powerful. But if you are new to Grasshopper Tecla Living, so you have one month, four weeks to set up download everything, set up the link, uh, and play a little bit. Do your homeworks with DVG references, a little bit with the base point. So the next one, it will be reinforcement. And again, I'm really open. If you will write to chris at learngrasshopper.com, uh, so I will hear your uh, voice and apply maybe to next uh, next workshop. So I'm really open to to that. So you can save the date. It's already uh, 14th of February, so it's Valentine's Day. If you would like to spend Valentine's Day with me and Tecla, maybe it will be better to say uh, that you are spending your Valentine's Day with Tecla and Grasshopper than with Chris. So really register at Workshop Tecla Reinforcement. If you already registered uh, for this workshop, so I will send you uh, I will send you not a notification anyway. So let's keep it as a workshop series. So let's go to uh, Q&A session. I think that this uh, with the reinforcement will be really useful for everyone. Not this one, I know that was really basic uh, for some of you. Uh, and But with the next one, for sure, we are going to the more advanced, but I think that you also, I shared some tips and tricks 
that you know, even advanced user today learn something new. OK, so let's go to the Q&A uh, session. So just tell me, how did you, how did you like uh, this uh, whole uh, workshop? Thanks a lot. That's great. A AI documentary. Uh, some things what to with it would be most helpful. I'm really happy to help you. Live link was disabled by system settings for net framework. Okay. I think you need to check out Hypergrid. Uh, you have to check it the last uh, service pack. Which service packs you have? Maybe we have to. Uh, updated. Great presentation, Chris. Thank you. Uh, Zangve, uh, Pulari, thanks. Uh, great. That's cool. That I really like that you enjoy it. If you have any questions, I still 10 minutes. Uh, I will try to answer. Uh, let me see. Mm, do we have some starred new comments? This I uh, beam. Um, yeah, Sebastian Lindholm uploaded the 116 version of the uh, live link. Um, yes, I think it maybe uh, it's supposed to be there all the explanation. Uh, thanks for today. I'll be waiting for Tektra drawing automating dimension for Grasshopper. Of course, I'm going to include that, May Susan. Uh, of course, you're going to be amazing. One love it. Thank you so much. It was great. I look forward to the future live links. I will going to inform you. If you are my list, I'm going to inform you. But also, if you if you get the link, go through the registration again. So you will for sure reserve the spot. Uh, Yes, uh, can you tell me about the online training courses? Is it available uh, with you? Uh, actually, I'm starting, uh, I'm doing the trainings for the Grasshopper Tecla Live Link. It's on, in the process, so for sure, before summer, I'm going to release. So if you're going for now, I'm focusing on this workshop, free workshop. So at the end of the workshop, uh, I hope I'm going to finish, so it will be uh, training available. Uh, for both for Tecla and Grasshopper fundamentals. So let's stay stay uh, updated and be on my list so you will not miss it. Are there books with examples about structure application of the tool? Uh, Michael, uh, no, actually there is not that many books, but uh, there is a really good uh, website um, created by uh, Sebastian. Uh, I can just show you. It's called the Grasshopper Tecla Live Link. And Grasshopper Tecla Live Link. Uh, let me see. It's a frequent we ask questions. I really love this uh, website. Uh, if you are interested in uh, learning more about the components, so here is a huge list of the questions uh, that you can uh, check out. So, really, uh, go to it, and there is lots of documents to dow download uh, here. Uh, keep it up, Chris. Great idea to split such a huge topic into a series of workshop. Yeah, uh, Greg, uh, I think we need to split it because it's a huge, huge, huge topic uh, about reinforcement, about uh, user-defined attributes. I think it will be the separate, separate one. Can you use bifocal in Grasshopper while you're explaining so we can see what the node you're using? Thanks. Yeah, sure. Sorry for sorry for that. Actually, I'm using always sunglasses, but today I just turn it off. Uh, thanks for this comment. I will be uh, more aware of that next time. Uh, Grasshopper can also create automation of detailing of Tecla projects. Uh, yeah, uh, you can also go into that detailing. You can create uh connections you can create reinforcement so it's not just about creating the structure so you can go to, into into details uh 
I'm looking forward to interoperability workflow with Tecla native objects as a result. Yes. Hi, Chris. Uh, sandwich walls uh, are usually the most difficult elements to make in Tecla in our project. How can Grasshopper can us with making these elements easier? Uh, good question. Actually, I know already some companies that just, uh, just are producing sandwich uh, walls and they are using a lot of uh, Grasshopper and uh, a lot of Tecla API. So actually you can uh, create uh, based on the uh, some of the shape that you have on the wall. Actually, you can add extra layers based on that. You can, for example, add reinforcement based on the uh, fittings and the holes. So for example, extra layer and change it thickness maybe check also the uh, lof lofting, uh, lifting anchors. You just click on the element uh, based on the weight, on the position of the walls and windows, you can choose it. So yeah, uh, so maybe maybe separate webinar uh, about workshop about just precast elements. What do you think, Matt Darius? Thanks, Chris, see you next time. Great presentation, waiting for the future ones. I'm going to inform you, thanks a lot. Can we interface with AI tools to the Grasshopper? If so, please explain. Uh, yeah, there is uh, already some uh, good examples how you can use uh, ChatGPT into, into Grasshopper. So actually you can ask the question asked for the code, uh, the ChatGPT. So actually you can create some objects. Actually I used already for creating some Python scripts that help me uh, into uh, into selecting some Tecla objects. For example, I was looking for similar objects and uh, ChatGPT helped me with the Python script, which helped me to select proper objects. Maybe it can be also a good topic for the workshop, like separate how AI can be used with uh, Tecla. So workshop with precast elements sounds amazing, yeah? Uh, I have some good examples, so you, you're you going to be motivated to learn Grasshopper. Great presentation. Could you please guide to get any additional template to download? Uh, yeah, just uh, just give me a mail to chris at learngrasshopper.com. I have already template from before that I'm using uh, to Tecla, actually. Uh, with some different uh, tab uh, groups, colors, and so on. So just give me a mail so I can send it. Uh, I, I think it's lying somewhere on Beam Corner. Uh, but yeah, just give me a mail so I will send you. Uh, can you do a quick demo how to automatically applying a connection using some point list, maybe between steel beam columns? Thanks. Yeah, sure. Let, let's uh, let's start with something. Let's do it. Uh, okay, so maybe just create a steel a steel beam a column. Let's say let's put it. Let's put it two steel beams and let's create maybe uh, one uh, steel beam at the top. Okay, so let's make a quick demo plane connection. Okay. Uh, so, for example, let's uh, first of all let's find out if we can uh, use some connection. Uh, let's say beam. Which one? Maybe you can just help me. Which one we can use? Uh, column and beam. Let's say it will create something, or maybe it will explode. Okay, it created something. Okay, it's not that connection, but okay, it's. Uh, uh, some uh, example, okay, maybe it can work. Okay, so we have one which is called column to be. Let's open our uh, Grasshopper file. Uh, let's take our beam uh, object. So let's take our beam object from, uh, from Tecla directly. I think we have it already. Okay, so here is a mod. We we'll maybe take a column, column. Or maybe we have to just beam. Yeah, it's just a beam. So let's uh, select the second one. Okay, and let's go to use component. So we have a, com oh, no, not this one. I will zoom it so you can see it a little better. Uh, component, 
here right now. Let's search for this component name, component catalog. And I, if I remember what was the name, it was beam column. Okay, it's not that easy to find it as it is, maybe some number. Uh, beam dashed column, it is. Beam dashed column. So it's number 14. So maybe it will be easier to just type 14. I'm not sure. Um, beam dashed. Hmm. It's not tagging. Okay. Uh, let's say, let's find it. Let's here beam and reinforcement. Column beam, yes, it's a column beam, okay. It's a number 14. Let's connect that. And you can see that we have to connect the main part and the first secondary part. So let's try with this one, if we just connect this one and this one. So you can see that we have created, it's different than it was before, but I think it was because we have a different order. So you can see this is a, just a BLMCOM connection. So everything, you can create them uh, by Grasshopper or use it just the component. So if you cl create that, so we have selected. And of course, if we have hundreds of connections, so you can just do whatever this in the same way. I hope it it's explained. Yeah, thanks, no, no worries. Uh, hi, Chris, can I create reinforcement in Revit by using Rhino inside Revit? Um, not directly. Not directly, but there is some work around about that. Um, I'm not the Revit expert, but for sure I'm going to, uh, after summer, I'm going to have the new workshop service series about uh, Revit. So I think we are going to talk about that, but yeah. Uh, but you, you will be able to create reinforcement through Rhino, definitely. Uh, Mr. Greg, uh, Grasshopper offers great geometric capabilities together with the drawing link. You could automate most cases. I hope that this workshop will open your eyes on the vast range of opportunities. Yeah, there is. It's not just because creating a 3D model, it's about creating 3D drawings. So automating uh, drawing creation for sandwich walls, it can be really, really amazing. Uh, if I forgot some of the questions, just uh, just will remind me, so I, I will answer. If not, so I will short close it. I will just check it. Mm -hmm. If I just forget, just please let the comment, just leave the comment. Mm -hmm. Uh, how can I have the Grasshopper license if I want to buy the Learn Grasshopper course? So every my, my students who have problem with the license, so I always try to uh, add to my educational license. So this is not a problem, Andre. So if, if it's an issue, so if you are my student, so just write my uh, write email to me, Chris at learngrasshopper.com. Mm. Here, Ashley, is the best to keep a copy of the downloaded if you are switching a lot? Yeah, uh, actually I have a hold the folder with the different uh, version of Tecla. So basically what I'm doing, I'm just copying and replacing them, just deleting and replacing. This is the best option uh, so far uh, we have. Thanks for your question, Ashley. Mm, this one we have it, okay. Okay, that's uh, that's enough for now. We have one and a half hour. Uh, so again, thank you, thank you very much. Let me see. Okay, last question: <laughs> Can you organize the workshop for Grasshopper Tecla with ChatGPT application? Yeah, uh, I have some two. Uh, maybe I do not have so many examples, but maybe. Yeah, let's uh, let's do that. Maybe we can also uh, show something about. Um, using ChatGPT for Tecla OpenAPI.
this maybe can be useful as well. What do you think? If possible, of course, everything is possible. So this is no worry. Uh, can you directly use the script in Grasshopper installed in Tecla? Uh, yeah, I like it's called Grasshopper components. It's using uh, uh, Rhino Insight technology. So actually you can use as a component. So you can just put it once uh, and and share it with your uh, environmental and people that can don't know Grasshopper, but can use this script as a component. Uh, Gabor, if you delete and replace parts in the model, how you manage drawings? The drawings are attached to the parts in Tecla. Okay, yeah. If you delete and replace the mod, uh, the model, the objects, of course, it will be the new part. So the new uh, marks will appear. But the thing is, Gabor, that also you can, uh, with this modify functions here, you can also modify. So you can modify beam, you can modify item, and you can modify plate. So actually, this will be will not create the new object. It will just modify. So all everything on the drawing will be in the same, uh, like with the same ID number. Okay, so we all always try not to replace, like, but just to modify. I I hope that this explanation helps you. Okay, I see. Thanks. Okay, so next uh, workshop in one uh, month on the Valentine's Day. So let's spend it together with Tecla and Grasshopper. Thank you very much. Tomorrow I will send you the the summary of this uh, workshop with the homeworks that you are going to do and hope in the during these four weeks you are going to solve all the exercises. So thanks for now. See you next time. Bye.